For me, it's the idea of personal vision. That, that each individual is unique. You can create and reduce and reflect the world around you. It's an inner vision as well as what's happening around you. You can make your dreams, your nightmares. The collective viewing experience where you have the dark room, it's ritualistic. You're sitting there in the dark. It's almost akin to being dreams where it comes towards you. And it's up to each individual to interpret not only what the filmmaker made, but each spectator to bring themselves to it. I would say, for me, it was um, studying with Shirley Clark at UCLA. I wasn't in the program. I was working uh, in, on the campus at the Academic Senate. And I had heard that Shirley Clark was teaching. And I wasn't a student. I was a working person, and part of the Academic Senate. I had a badge. And I went and told her that I had wanted to study with her because I had stories to tell. And I felt that she, as part of the Warhol group and founding the co-op, I learned so much from her. I would say seeing her films, like Portrait of Jason, The Connection, even her one-minute films, even the way she conducted the class. She would say, if you can make a one-minute film, you can make it a feature-length film. What do you want to say? What's the essence of what you want to say? And so it's all about form and content and how you merge these into a almost like a prism or a diamond and how you speak to that. So Shirley Clark would be one person reading Jonas Mika's movie journals. I hadn't seen a lot of the films, but the passion in which he wrote inspired me to want to see more and do more. And also just picking up a camera and shooting on 16 millimeter, the experience and seeing the represented image I thought was amazing. I also like uh, Catherine Brea, the feature length uh, woman feminist filmmaker who did Fat Girl and Romance. I love the way she tells stories, and I think that's fascinating. I have one important film in terms of documentaries for a Jew's Blood of a Beast when he went in a slaughterhouse. It's the first time I had seen something like that, merging this surrealist dream into taking it in the reality of what happens in a slaughterhouse the life and death and blood and sweat. And it's all black and white, but it still had the power to move me. I would say Rambo, uh, because I, there's a filmmaker whose work I like and I'm showing today is Christmas on Earth by Barbara Rubin. She was a teenager when she made the film. And it's a happening, bodily happening film. It's a film within a film. Their bodies are painted. It's black and white. It's very dramatic. And uh, Christmas on Earth was a phrase I hadn't heard when it came into distribution. So I looked up Christmas on Earth, and it turns out it was a Rambeau. And it was from his poetry, Season in Hell. And it was the chapter eight of nine chapters, and it's talking about leaving behind the old, the superstition, and rejoicing in the new. And I thought Rambeau's poetry was, is important because I make experimental personal vision films, and poetry is also about not linear ideas, a beginning, a middle, and end, but also about associations. And uh, not just dreams, but associations and interior space and ideas, and I think uh, emotional as well. Uh, Rambeau's very emotional, so I would say his poetry. And poetry is important for me in terms of reading what I read and, uh, and inspire me to when I make films. I would s start by saying my name. You know, my name's M.M. M.M. Sarah, S-E-R-R-A. But when I was very little, the name means Mary Magdalene. And in our culture, in a Christian puritanical culture, uh, it's the woman is other. It's uh, the woman is flesh. There's a virgin, the whore, and Catholicism, Christianity. There's always these representations. And 
So uh, from knowing that my name is Mary Magdalene, this iconic classic, it asked me to ask why. What does it mean to be other? What does it mean to be outside the heteronormative um, capitalist system in a way? Because personal vision it means that we're all equal, that we all have a quality and a statement and something to say. There isn't this pyramid effect. So I would say for me, a very personal thing, it made me an avant-garde filmmaker, was just my name, Mary Magdalene. It led me to ask why, what's it mean? And it allowed me the freedom to be outside and to question the system, to stand outside and look and evaluate and analyze. And sometimes it's difficult. Freedom is actually a challenge. It's really difficult. And, but it's also liberating and allows you more opportunities to, if you will take them, if I will take them, to uh, make work that is more radical. Explore all the possibilities, all the tools, not to just say, oh, I can only work in film or I can only work in digital. Uh, right now where I am in New York, the, the New American Cinema Group, the film co-op, we're having an optical printing class that whatever age you are, you can take it. But a lot of newer filmmakers want to experience the filmic process because you have the chemicals, the smell. It's more visceral, tactile, and it's more nuanced than digital. Digital is constantly changing. And so I say explore all the possibilities and be willing to experiment and be willing to fail sometimes or do something that you feel, oh, well, I can't believe this didn't work out, but I can learn something from it. I'm going to keep trying to keep doing it and to challenge yourself to continue to make work, be productive and be structured, analyze your time, research the area you're living in, find the best teachers or find the labs you want to work with or the people, collaborate. I would say collaborate too, rather than being the solitary isolated genius, be part of a group that inspires each other and forms. Like the cathedrals in the Middle Ages weren't built by one man or woman. It was a collaborative effort. And I think collaborations are good. I would say it's vital because this program's bringing in people from other places like me, like Beth B., John Zorn, Charles Atlas. It's exposing to uh, making a hot house or green, uh, greenhouse type environment for uh, new filmmakers to thrive in. You need it. It's, um, it's, you need to not only make your own work, but to see as much work, read as much, look at different types of films being made or different scholars or philosophers or poets. And I think it's vital for the intellectual community. I think the intellect is extremely important in strategies and, and the ability to analyze things. And I think, well, they say, oh, you can see that online. But when I go online to look, it's clipped. It's, for instance, I'll give you an example, blowjobs online. And I couldn't find a DVD of it. And I wanted to show all 40 minutes silent, 18 frames a second to my students, black and white. And on YouTube, it's like five minutes. It's 24 frames a second. And it's edited fast. And so they're not getting the uh, integrity of the film. So I think theaters and Places like the, this university and this theater and this program are essential for creative community and new filmmakers.